If you want to go for gold in CX, then you better make sure your customer experience is consistent. The goal that I wanted to meet was to ensure that the heart behind our service was correct. So it's not just answering phone calls and answering their questions or getting the emails handled and you know finishing your workday. Every interaction we wanted to treat as if this was my family member calling, how would I want them to be approached? Let's take a look at how one company created an award-winning program by adopting a framework for consistency on this episode of the CX Leader Podcast. The CX Leader Podcast is produced by Walker, an experience management firm that helps our clients accelerate their XM success. You can find out more at walkerinfo.com. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Walker, host of this episode of the CX Leader Podcast, and thank you for listening. We always say it's a great time to be a CX leader, and on this show, we explore topics and themes to help leaders like you develop great programs and deliver amazing experiences for your customers. Think about the best experience you've had as a customer. What about it made it great? Was it just one thing or the sum of many small interactions? Do you feel like the experience matched the company's identity? Was what you experienced, what you felt you would expect based on their brand promise? Great experiences are consistent. You know what to expect when you interact with an organization that reflects their brand through their CX efforts. Today, we're going to talk with a company that certifiably knows how to deliver a consistent customer experience and get a look at their gold-winning program. Chelsea Reynolds is marketing manager for UMove, a pet joint health supplement company and gold winner in this year's Best Customer Service at the 2024 Customer Experience Awards. Chelsea, welcome to the CX Leader Podcast. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're, I'm excited about our conversation today and kind of figuring out what it takes to, to build a framework for award-winning customer service. And maybe to set the stage for our conversation, you can introduce you move your role at the company, Um, And just help give us the context for what we'll discuss around all things customer experience and and your recent gold winning award in the customer service category. Yeah, absolutely. So you kind of summed it up at the beginning. You move is a joint health supplement uh, for pets, mostly dogs and cats. We support over 2 million dogs globally. Um, So we're just excited to be in people's homes, to have a part in their lives and to support their pets as best we can. Um, I started with a company about two and a half years ago, and I was actually one of the first US hires because the company at the time was based in the UK and customer service was the name of the game. So I was the first customer service hire, um, answering phone calls, answering emails. I was really able to get a good look at our customer base, what their expectations would be and what their needs were as our relationship grew and was ongoing. And I think that really helped me over the the coming years develop this customer experience because I was able to start on the front lines and then build from that experience. Yeah, absolutely. I think front lines and just the interaction that the front lines have with the customers and how to match that to expectations, how to problem solve quickly is definitely a topic that we talk about a lot on this podcast. And I know listeners who are practitioners in the CX space would likely feel the same. So that's really great context to helping, you know, build your understanding of what the customer's needs are and what the different interaction points look like so that you can craft that experience. And and speaking of, can you maybe give us a, a little bit of an understanding for how you were able to develop that framework that won you the gold uh, in the customer service category? Absolutely. So a little background about me. I was actually a flight attendant before I joined UMove, um, and I did that for eight years. So being, again, at the front of um, the customer-facing side of the business, it really helped me understand more of what customers were looking for rather than only what the company was hoping to provide. And I think that experience really helped me bridge the gap between Um, being creative versus having that business strategy. And both of those things are really important, but one without the other is not going to be as successful as utilizing both would be. Um, So in terms of creativity, you need to hear from the customer. You need to kind of let your creative juices flow and expand um, the possibilities of what you can present to them. But of course, in terms of business strategy, you can't just go 
give out free stuff all the time. You know, you still have to have income. You still have to um, support the business. And I think utilizing both of those um, to really go hand in hand is the thing that creates that great customer experience. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And when you pair that with the feedback that maybe you're receiving right from the front lines early on in your um, tenure, you move, it's it's probably the recipe for success. I mean, it seems like it is, especially if you're a recent gold recipient for the 2024 customer service category. So when we talk about you know blending the creativity with the business mindset, what about like the components of what makes up a good customer experience? And we can have it be specific to a, a support or a service interaction, since I know that was your guys' category um, specifically. But what are those individual pieces and how do you know how to bring them all together? Maybe give us a little bit of background as far as how that came about for you, Move. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the goal that I wanted to meet each and every day, each and every week was to ensure that the heart behind our service was was correct. So it's not just answering phone calls and answering their questions or getting the emails handled and you know finishing your work day. Every interaction we wanted to treat as if this was my family member calling, how would I want them to be approached? They are calling about a loved one, which is their pet. It can be a very sen- sensitive subject. Um, typically, if if somebody is reaching out to ask about joint health supplements, their dog may not be very healthy. They may not be at the top of their game. Um, and it's our responsibility to not only provide them with good information, but let them know that we support them. So some things that I was able to create were, first of all, we would share files about our customers within our customer service department. So if um, somebody answered the phone and say her name was Susan, Somebody takes Susan's call and she has three questions about her dog. She mentions that um, she's concerned about a hurricane coming because she lives in Florida. And she mentions a husband. Well, we take notes on that whole interaction. And so the next time Susan calls, somebody is pulling up the notes that we have on her to say, how are those uh, tablets doing for your dog? I, I remember that you had these three questions about it. Did you come through that hurricane okay? How's Jimmy, your husband, you know, whatever. Just we want to personalize every single interaction. And it wasn't too much work to kind of get the notes going. And now that we have that foundation to build on them, I think it's absolutely what sets us apart and what keeps our customers coming back because they understand that that relationship is based on loyalty. Yeah. And I was struck by it just when you were going through kind of recanting how that all came about. It does seem very simplified, but also the fact that it's rooted in making sure every team member who's interacting with the customer is coming from a point of concern. And really that goes to, you know, really why your company exists. And it, I think it's a good articulation of how you live your brand promise, which is what leads to these consistent experiences. So um, it's cool to kind of see how that foundation is really what started just by taking notes, but then how that grows and scales over time, um, right? It's just something a lot of people can probably relate to in terms of building up a more robust CX practice and how you get it all working together. Right. Maybe help our listeners understand how that's evolved as the team has grown or as your different operations and processes within the company grows, maybe tools or systems that you use. How do you keep building on that and in a way that scales, but keeps, again, that really that ethos and that heart of the customer um, in mind. Right. So we did um, add some new systems in that would help the tracking of the customer information be a lot smoother. So we really just started typing things in an Excel sheet. And now we have a database where they're, you know, we can pull from. And if you just type in their name, that customer information comes up. So we've definitely grown there. Um, But in terms of growing the team, it was always very important to me to hire team members who either had pets, have worked in the industry, or just have that true care and concern. Even if you don't own a dog right now, do you want one? Like, do you care about this exact thing that we're doing for other people? And do you have that kind of ingrained in you? Um, And that would be something that I would look for while hiring not just can you answer the phone and can you be punctual and you know day-to-day business things, but w- do you have empathy? And can you put yourself in somebody else's shoes? And 
still remain professional, but it's okay if your feelings get involved a little bit because theirs are as well. And where we meet in the middle in that, I think is really, um, really important and really valuable. Yeah. And it helps you live your brand truth too, which I think is something that is really um, integral, obviously, to what you're trying to do at, at you Move. And when we were, were getting ready for our conversation today, I shared with you that I actually recognize your brand name because while not a dog owner myself, um, I do get to enjoy my little niece, um, who's not that not that little. She's an older black lab, um, but she loves to swim, and she's eight. And so, I think for the last couple of years, she's been on your your joint supplement. And you know, it is something she takes every morning. And when she stays with me, I'm the one who's giving her that treat, which she yeah. very much enjoys. Yes. But also, we know it makes her feel better, so that she can swim and stay kind of young at heart and. I just that goes into everything you're talking about as far as the the way in which you represent yourself as a company Wait. through your frontline employees and other team members as well. So that's just a really fun and yeah, relatable awesome. connection. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you've talked a lot about how you've really helped set this vision in place at you move, but what other support is needed to make that happen? How do you start to cultivate that within the company? Um, again, to that idea of, of scale and helping build this, you know, really it's the ethos in the company, but then how do you make it actionable from, you know, um, a broader process standpoint? Right. I have been very fortunate to have, um, open and really great communication with a lot of different members of different teams. Uh, specifically, I want to shout out our COO. Um, he was a very integral part of allowing me to grow this process and grow um, the initiatives that I thought would really take us further. Um, so he kind of was able to give me the support I needed, but also step back and say, like, I trust you. Go forward with it. If you have any questions, I'm here. But you know, you're here for a purpose and you you have the right mindset and kind of was able to let me fly, which was awesome. But then the customer service team, um, without their yes and without their enthusiasm, none of this would be possible. None of this would have been actioned. So it was really a, a great collaboration between operations, between customer service, talking with e talking with marketing of like, how can we make sure that the voice of the customer is always at the top of our concern but that the way that we're speaking back to them is consistent across the brand. Um, and it was just such a team effort and such a really empowering thing to be a part of, to know that in a corporate world and in a corporate setting, people really do like back up their product and back up what they're saying and and genuinely do care. Um, so it's just been such an honor to work with these people and, and on this team. And yeah, I, I could not say enough good things, truly. Yeah. And while you're talking, I'm sort of getting um, kind of like ding, 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 uh, operations, uh, cross-functional commitment, you know, attached to the brand, all of the things that we know as practitioners are key to success. Um, so it's great when things line up and you're able to do um, award-winning work like you've been able to implement at UMove. Is there anything, you know, was it was it service blueprinting? Was it customer journey mapping? Was it both? You're talking a lot about like the operational as well as the experiential side of things. Is that just something that naturally came about through your cross-functional um, work within the organization? Or was there um, specific things that you you set out to do and accomplish with those different teams? Yeah. I mean, it felt very natural, but of course, there were very pointed things that we wanted to make sure that we were achieving. So service blueprinting was absolutely part of it. Journey mapping, absolutely. We want to know every single touch point of the customer from the, the time that they hear about our product to clicking on our website to placing an order. Um, and again, we had such open and available teams with that collaboration that we were able to look at emails before they were created and write them together and um, make sure that every touch point had the same tone of voice, had the same presentation. Um, there was a time that um, we started getting some negative reviews on Trustpilot about our delivery, which we were shocked to hear because from our perspective, on, from our end, everything right. was going really well, right? And all of a sudden we start getting, I mean, review after review, that's just, my package hasn't arrived, where is it? And we're looking at these order numbers saying, 
it says it's delivered. There's a picture of it on their front doorstep. What are we missing? And it was with, first of all, hearing the customer feedback and, and taking it seriously and then going to the operations team to say, we're missing something here. We need to dive in deeper. Um, they were actually able to uncover that our shipping partner had just been saying that they were delivering things, but weren't. It's a big problem. So our customers are yeah. here. Great. Our customers are here thinking that either we're we just taking their money and we're not giving them a product if they're it's their first time purchasing from us. So it's not a great, you know, initial experience. And when we found that out, it was only a couple of weeks, but it felt like it could have been forever because it was so you impactful, know, severe. Yeah. Right. Um they jumped right into action though and immediately started working on finding us a new shipping partner. What we were able to do on our side was send out proactive emails, which I think is another thing. Proactivity has really, really been important and really set us apart. Um, but hey, we're having some trouble with our delivery and we're really sorry about that. If your order is delayed by a week, like consider that normal for the time being. If it's more than a week after you expect, please reach out and give us a call. And we're going through calling every person, which was very sure. tedious and very time consuming. But in order to build that relationship, like you need to know that we take it seriously. And so if we need to um, take a couple of days or take a week to contact customers who have been negatively affected by something about our brand, their experience that initially was very negative was turned into a positive just with that interaction. And it was, again, really empowering to know like the the experience that they're going to have is in our hands. Whether it it goes as smoothly or as as we were hoping, of course, you hope everything is just sunshine and, and right. daisies all the time. But when it's not, how are we going to turn that back into a positive experience when it could have really tanked? Um, and I just think that was one one of the most stressful <laughs> times, of course, <laughs> at my job. But I will always look back at like one of the most fulfilling because it was such a difficult thing to work through and we came out so well um i think everybody really learned a lot from that process about working together as a team and making sure that the customer is first um and it just really built that again strong foundation and it let our customers know that your opinion is really important to us and if things aren't up to your standard we want to beat it yeah no, absolutely. I feel like you had a lot of really great nuggets in recanting that story because one, I think it's a one-to-one -one comparison around how listening to your customers is beneficial to your business's bottom line. You know, if the the reviews on Trustpilot were the first indicators that something was very wrong operationally within the company, um, having that trust, I think, was a word you used to say, you know, we value what our clients are saying enough to the point where we're going to look into it. And actually in doing so, it really benefited the bottom line of the organization. So I think that's always a win, you know, not a win that it was happening, but a win for listening and a win for customer experience and making sure that you're, you're valuing what it is your customers want to share with your organization. I really always like talking with um, companies that are newer in their CX journey and really getting to build things from scratch. But I would argue that a lot of people listening, you know, feel maybe the pain from the other side of things, which is maybe we're having to unwind or undo or really bring to light customer experience within organizations where maybe it hasn't always been the priority from the ground up. So I don't know if you have any specific experience with that, but what would you, maybe what advice might you offer to somebody who is listening to this podcast and say, oh, it sounds great to from scratch be able to, to design for the ideal, but what about the kind of reality maybe that some of our listeners are facing just with whatever unique elements are going on within their organizations? Yeah, I think I was super lucky to be able to build it from scratch, but if I didn't and if I was coming into something that was maybe unhealthy or needed to rewind a little bit to, again, set that strong foundation, my best tip would be be honest with your customers. Like people know when you're trying to pull the wool over their eyes. People know when you're talking around a, an issue or trying to beat around the bush. And I think for the most part, for me specifically, I would just say it, like say what's going on. Where is my package? Why have I, why have I not gotten it? Why do I call and you don't answer the phone? 
Like, what are these things that are red flags to me, but from your perspective, it's something that you're trying to get a hold of and change. Right. Say it. You can say, hey, you're totally right. We've missed the mark, but I give you my word starting today on September 9th, whatever (laughs) whatever day it is, that we're going to do better moving forward. My name is Chelsea. You can call back and ask for me or give, you know, make it personal, but I think val- validating what the customer is saying and then explaining the things that you have in process that are going to bring that change give you at least another chance. Like it may not keep them as a customer forever. Too much damage may have already been done. I don't know everybody's circumstance, but I think honesty, transparency, and um, a new commitment will take you further than than anything else right off the bat. Yeah, I think that that is spot on. And I feel like giving an, a leading indication, and I think that it goes towards the element of proactivity that you're discussing as well, right? It's like you might not be able to control everything that you want to be able to control, but to acknowledge and have customers feel heard and indicate where this type of feedback is already in motion for improvement is certainly something that, you know, thinking about the opener for the podcast, if I'm reflecting on some of the best customer experiences that I've had, you know, feeling heard is just so key. And I think that becomes even more and more important in today's day and age where, you know, feedback can be given in a lot of different ways, solicited, unsolicited. Um, But having the company re-communicate that you're being listened to across points X, Y, Z, Um, is just such a validation. And again, it goes really far in terms of building trust and loyalty and repurchase and all of the good things that, you know, the business leaders care about, which is really what I think as CX leaders we're tasked with proving every day. So exactly. And it's free. Right. Like you don't have to send out gifts. You don't have to do all these things where it's not in the budget. Like you can answer the phone or answer an email and just validate them right there. And then hopefully keep it moving. Yeah. Well, and see, that's very interesting too, because it does seem so simple, but is it always so obvious? I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Did you, did a lot of the work that you did within, you know, kind of establishing the processes, did it center around training or like living a brand or maybe help us understand how do you integrate that naturally into every front line and maybe even behind the scenes, you know, personnel within the organization? Yeah, I think training and development is a really big part of it. Um, And sometimes, kind of like we were discussing, it's undoing training that they've received elsewhere. So there were a couple of ladies that I I worked with on the team where they would say, you know, I used to work at a bank and I would handle calls like this. And they were very monotone and, and not able to like open up that empathy that we were looking for. And it would be me listening to their calls, me going through the training again of like, hey, if you were talking to a friend how would you say this? Because on the phone, it sounds like it's very clinical and that's not what our tone of voice is. Like, how would you say it to me? And it would just be one-on-one. And again, it can be time consuming, but look at what we've built. Like every single thing of training, of development, of going over it and going over it and a third time going over it, like it was for a purpose and it's paid off now. So now if I leave, like a success to me is if I leave the business, it will still run the way that it was created to run. It's not me holding it together. I'm not the glue. Customer service knows how to be great, whether I'm there or not. Operations knows that they need to communicate with customer service, whether anybody is there to be the liaison or not. And these things have really been set in stone um, here at this business, and it, it'll it continue to be great for forever, hopefully. Yeah, and the the consistency is ingrained in you know everything you do from the training to the processes to the kind of instructions for whatever it might look like going forward. It's 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 key, and it's very obvious just based on everything you've been able to share today that that is fundamental to the success of your program. And it's really no wonder um, that you all were the gold winners for for this year's um, U.S. CX Award in customer Thank you. service. We were very excited. It was a great time. <laughs> yeah, it's great to celebrate something fun, and especially when you have all the hard work to see it pay off um, in that manner. Well, Chelsea, we're getting to the point in the show where we ask all of our guests to 
attempt to distill what I would argue have been a lot of great tips that you've offered our listeners throughout the course of today's podcast. But if you had to give one, what would you recommend to CX leaders in terms of something they can implement right away uh, to make improvements in their customer experience programs? Yeah, I don't think anyone would be surprised to hear me say this, but it is get to the front line immediately. If you are not the person answering the phone calls or the emails, you need to start listening to the people who answer the phone calls and the emails. You need to read the emails. You need to have recordings of things and hear what customers are saying, whether it's positive, negative, or in between, because you knowing the systems and the budget and the things that you want to happen moving forward Hearing directly from the customer's mouth will give you new ideas and creativity, but also probably help you plug some holes and fill some gaps that you may not have been aware there were. So if you hear 10 phone calls in a row of somebody getting stuck at an ordering process online, you can go to e-com and say, hey, seems like this is this is an issue. Let's look into it. If you hear that somebody is loving um, a certain product that you have, maybe push that towards marketing to promote that a little bit more. Like there are things in the in-between that I think get dropped when you're just listening to your AI systems that are picking up keywords or listening you know, to your data collection agencies that are saying, this is what's trending. Literally go and listen. And I think you'll be able to collect a lot more from that than anybody that's a third party trying to you know, tell you what you want to hear. A great tip. And it makes sense that that's what you can use to kind of be the the bullhorn and bring that empathy in from the customer to the way in which the, the business operates. Awesome. Chelsea Reynolds is marketing manager for Umove, a pet joint health supplement company. Chelsea, thanks for being on the CX Leader podcast. If any of our listeners want to follow up with any of the tips or advice that you shared today, is there a way they could reach out? Um, maybe let us know the best way to get in touch. Absolutely. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, it's linkedin.com slash in slash CR Orlando. Awesome. And if you want to discuss this topic with one of our Walker experts, or if you have a great idea for a topic on a future episode, email us at podcast at walkerinfo.com. We would love to hear from you. Be sure to rate the CX Leader podcast through your podcast service and leave us a review. Your feedback will help us improve the show and deliver the best possible value to you, our listener. Check out our website, cxleaderpodcast.com. From there, you can follow the show and find all our previous episodes and a link to our blog, which we update regularly. The CX Leader Podcast is a production of Walker. We're an experience management firm that helps companies accelerate their XM success. You can read more about us at walkerinfo.com. Thank you for listening. And remember, it's a great time to be a CX leader. We'll see you next time.